You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. So, firstly, thank you very much for joining us. If you could just introduce yourself to our listeners and tell them perhaps a little bit about yourself as a kind of introduction before we move on to the main subject. Sure. Well, I'm Andrew Burney. I'm, I'm a consultant dermatologist and a skin cancer surgeon. And I work at for East Kent Hospitals mainly, uh, full-time, in fact, for the, at the Kent and Canterbury and William Harvey Hospitals. Um, I also do some private practice as well. And uh, I've also been involved in the production of a, of a sunscreen too. Now, I know you want to talk a little bit about the importance of uh, sun protection, firstly. That's right. I mean, as I said, you know, I, I do skin cancer surgery, and probably eighty-five percent of my workload is skin cancer related. And so, sort of, and most of these people uh, have had skin damage and sun damage as a result, or well, skin cancer as a result of sun exposure and ultraviolet exposure, being either sunshine or sunbeds. And um, consequently, uh, I, I realised that if we could try and get, spread the word that actually being sensible in the sun. It will hopefully reduce the incidence of skin cancer. So, tell us a little bit more about the uh, importance of being able to protect yourself and that sort of area around price and availability and affordability. Yeah, well, I, as a, I, I don't want to tell people not to go out in the sun because actually living an outdoor lifestyle is, you know, it's, it's good for you. It's got health benefits, both psychological. Uh, cardiovascular, all kinds of reasons why you, you should be able to still go out and enjoy yourself. So, but you can protect yourself against the potential risks of overdoing it in the sun by using sunscreen. But if you if you have to economise on it because it's expensive, then potentially you're not going to use enough, and therefore, hope, well, and potentially end up with, you know causing yourself some damage. Likewise, if, if your sun protection is not very nice to use, you might think twice about using it as well. So ideally, you want to have something that you're happy to, to use every day and hopefully several times a day if you're out for any length of time. Now, sort of, um, you know, continue with that. I understand you've been involved in the development of uh, a sun cream that, you know, isn't uh, too expensive. So I was hoping you could tell us a bit more about that. Certainly. It's called Altruist dermatologist sunscreen and as i sort of alluded to a little bit already the um some of the reasons why people don't use sunscreen are that they find it sticky and horrible or they find it leaves their skin looking white um other people don't like sunscreen because it's a bit smelly and some people are a bit cautious about using it because of the risk of allergy or they've got sensitive skin and then finally uh people potentially don't use sunscreen because it's expensive and they, they're going to be rationing its use so Along with a, a friend called David, who I met whilst I spent a year out in South Africa about seven years ago, uh, we uh, came up with the idea of producing a dermatologist quality sun, sunscreen, which is sold at the cheapest possible price by cutting out the, the marketing costs and the profits at all the different levels of manufacturer, manufacturer and also retail uh, to hopefully remove, if you like, all the barriers to why people don't, don't use sunscreen. And I understand also that um, it's not for profit, so the money goes back into it, but also goes towards uh, a charity as well. That's right. We uh, support a charity called Under the Same Sun, which looks after people with albinism in Africa in particular. It's mainly focused in Tanzania, but equally they do spread out throughout Africa. And we've also, uh, through a, a Dutch charity that looks after people with albinism been able to send out 20,000 tubes of sunscreen to Africa this year to be given out to people with albinism. So um, obviously one of the effects of too much sun I think you know, people are becoming more and more aware about is um, you know skin problems and, and skin cancers so uh, do you have sort of uh, any ideas or ways of describing to us what some of those warning signs might be if people are worried? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you know, people on the whole are worried about developing a skin cancer in particular, and there's obviously different types of skin cancer. 
I wouldn't expect people to be able to identify specific morphological changes of lesions. So the best thing to really think about is if you notice a change in one of your moles or a lesion on your skin, that's worth getting looked at by your doctor. And also new or non-healing lesions, so scabs that don't heal, uh, little bumps that appear on the skin that weren't there before, they're definitely worth getting looked at. And again, showing these to your doctor. So um, I did hear recently, that, you know, a lot of sun creams, if you don't put them on right or, or thick enough, then it doesn't actually work, which you don't always think about. So I was hoping you could talk a bit more about that. Sure. Well, um, the, the SPF rating on a, on a sunscreen is based upon a laboratory levels of uh, or laboratory quantities of sunscreen that's being applied to the skin, which is almost always more than what we actually put on. So your, your typical person is going to put a thin layer of sunscreen on before they go out, which is possibly why some people come away and say, oh, the sunscreen didn't work. When you put sunscreen on your skin, you actually want to be putting enough on such that if it's a cream, your arm looks white before it then subsequently is rubbed in. And um, that will hopefully get your protection levels up to what's actually labelled on the bottle. Uh, and there's another reason why people recommend using you know, 30 or 50 as opposed to the lower ones, because actually if you're only putting on half the quantity that you should have with a 30, you're probably only going to get a factor 15 equivalent. So was there anything else you'd like to get over or, or cover to our listeners or perhaps even some useful uh, information or contact details where they can look up and find out more? Sure. I mean, well, my, my personal practice, you know, I think it's probably people sort of say, well, how often should I put sunscreen on? Um, I guess my personal practice is that it, from March to October, I, I wear... Uh, my my own sunscreen, the outer sunscreen, is a post shave moisturizer. I shave in the morning and then apply that afterwards. And that, rather than just doing it in the area I shaved, I extend up to my forehead, ears, behind the ears, neck, and so on. So I've got a base layer of protection such that if I end up you know, being caught out, if you sort of mean like without being outdoors for longer than I thought I was going to be, I've got something on already. So I'm unlikely to get burnt. But equally, um, the time to be using sunscreen is if, if you are going to be outdoors for, say, pay more than, say, 15 minutes in the summer months, it's worthwhile making sure you've got sunscreen on and ideally putting it on before you go out and then taking some with you to reapply it. Because so it's one of those sort of things I tend to forget, you know, if you're going to be sort of I suppose, sitting out in the sun, you put sun cream on, but if you go out for a walk or you suddenly decide to do a little bit of gardening, you don't always think, but technically, you know, that sun is still on you just as much as if you were sunbathing. Absolutely, and that's what, that's often the story I hear from my patients. They say, yeah, but what else do you do? Oh, I do gardening. We'll say, well, actually, you're still, even if you're not actively looking to be in the sun, you still are. And so it really makes sense. And people who play sport throughout the year, yeah, you're out in the sun then. And um, as you said, going for a walk. Again, you're not looking to be in the sun, but you are. And so uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to to think, well, I'm going to be outdoors, therefore it's probably worth putting some sunscreen on. Well, if you're happy we've covered it, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to us here at BRFM Bridge Radio on the Daniel Monday Night Commuter Show. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks ever so much for your time.